Welcome back to the Jason of All Trades channel. If you're joining us from the previous two videos on arc welding, you know that we've been talking about building up bead on plate as a wonderful way to practice. If you're joining us for the first time, you should go back, watch those two other videos, and then come back to this one. But how do we take the skills that we've been learning on our pad and apply those to real world joints? Well, today's video is gonna cover just that. We're gonna cover the butt weld, the lap weld, the T weld, and then a pipe saddle. And then at the very end, we're gonna talk about a couple more joints that we're not gonna to demonstrate today. We're gonna to talk about how these skills relate back to those. So without further ado, let's get to it. All right, the first type of weld that we're gonna do is the butt weld. Because it's gonna feel the most similar to doing our beads on plate, like we've been practicing. But before we can start welding, we have to tack it together. If you've ever tacked anything together before, tack welds are just small temporary welds to hold things together while we get them welded out. What I suggest for tacking is finding a smaller diameter rod, preferably a 6010 or a 6011. We're gonna have a full video coming out on different types of rods and what they're good for in the future, so get subscribed if you'd like to hear more about some of these informational videos so you never miss out. Let's talk about tacking these for, together first. So to get started with our tack weld, we're gonna take our 6011 rod, we're gonna nice and firmly hold them together and just put a small weld right here in the corner. Now if we just tack one end and let it sit, what's gonna happen is these plates are going to separate at the end. So there's probably a 16th inch gap that's developed, but it's nice and easy to close back up. So we're just gonna close it up and tack the other side. So welding a butt joint is gonna feel the most similar to doing our bead on plate like we have over here. The biggest thing that I see people running into outside of just issues with tacking is they have a tendency to lose the seam of the weld. What I recommend is just taking some soapstone and scratching yourself a small line on that seam. It's just going to help it pop a little bit more underneath the hood, but everything else is going to be the same as running our bead on plate. 90 degrees in terms of our heat split, meaning we're not trying to put more heat on one side or the other. 5 to 10 degrees in the direction of travel, and then just go A to B. Now with my students, generally where I start to see some frustration is when we get into lap welds. The biggest reason for this is students just not fully understanding the way heat moves through metal at different parts of it. So if I was to heat this metal up on the very edge of this plate, it's going to take less heat to melt than if I tried to heat it up right in the middle. So where we have this seam of welding on the middle and welding on the edge, it's gonna take more heat on this bottom plate than it is the top. So just understanding that as you go to weld it. The other thing that I see students missing out on is not developing that puddle completely first and then moving on. They strike the arc and then just start moving. You've got to watch your puddle, and it really shows on a lap weld when you're not watching. If this is 45 degrees, you know, splitting our heat evenly between the bottom and the top, we just want to bring our, our rod up a little bit to point more heat down at the base metal, have our 5 to 10 degrees in the direction of travel, and just go A to B. If you notice that your puddle is starting to wander up to the top plate or wander down to the bottom plate, just move your rod accordingly and that's gonna help you fight that puddle and get it to go where you want it to. Now, very similarly to our lap weld, a T weld has a combination of welding the edge of a piece and the center of a piece. So, we're gonna need more heat down here on the bottom in order to get this welding. But with a lap weld, you can generally do more of a 45 degree rather than a little steeper, like we have with our lap weld generally a 45 degree, and what I recommend is just bringing your rod up into that top plate a little bit. That's gonna tighten your arc up, cooling down that, that weld on the top, or the arc on the top, and then that gravity is gonna help feed that puddle down below. So about a 45 degree, same thing, 10 to 15 degrees in the direction of travel, and go A to B. 
Now the pipe saddle can get really overcomplicated, but I'm here to tell you it doesn't have to be. When you're welding, you want to focus most of your heat on your continuous pipe because where you have grooved this pipe out has gotten much thinner and it's on the edge of the, you know, the end of the material like we talked about before. So if we put most of our heat to our continuous pipe and just go from one side to the other. What I suggest that you start with as you get started is just do it in quarters. So do this weld first, then this weld, then flip the pipe over and do the same thing. And as you get better, you can work on going from one end to the other and then working on welding it in place as well. Now, before I talk about those last two welds that we haven't covered yet, I wanna thank you so much for your time and watching this video and ask you to please subscribe to the channel, like this video and leave a comment down below if there's some video ideas that you have and you'd like to see me do. But now let's talk about the last two welds that we didn't cover. A pipe to plate like this, which is basically just a T-weld, but round. And then a pipe to pipe like this, which is really just a butt weld, but wrapped around. When it comes to those pipe welds, there's really one main thing that you need to be paying attention to. That's keeping your arc angle, leaning that five to 10 degrees in the direction of travel as you move around the pipe. If you go statically, just left to right, like you would do on a flat weld, your arc angle is gonna be all over the place and how your heat is getting transferred to that pipe is gonna be all out of whack. So it's really the only difference there. There's also some body movement and things like that and stops and starts, but if you've subscribed, don't worry because we're gonna do a video on that in the future. And there you have it. If you can take the skills that you've learned on the pad and apply them to these welds and start to practice these welds, you're well on your way to a great career in welding or just a fun hobby to have. If you've enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe for more. It really does mean the world to me. Uh, I've enjoyed making the videos so far and building this community has been awesome. So thank you guys so much for your support. Stay tuned for more videos in the How to Arc Weld series. We've got coming up on how to do starts and stops more clean. We've got things on out of position and dealing more with pipe, all sorts of fun stuff like that. So stay tuned for that. And as always, have a wonderful day.